Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us today. It often gets pointed out that flat earthers don't actually have a unified model of how flat earth works. But I recently had two people commenting on my videos claiming that they knew what the correct flat earth model is. Although they've actually provided me with two completely different concepts which seem to come from totally different places. A bit like how Atlas VPN makes it seem like you're coming from a completely different place. It reroutes your data through one of its secure servers and lets you choose where on earth you want your data routed through. This gives you the control to decide where you want a particular website to think you are in the world rather than the country you are actually in. It also comes with a feature to block websites from leaving trackers on your computer that could be monitoring your activity, as well as being able to see if any websites linked to your email address have had any data breaches that could have compromised your passwords. Sign up today using the link in the description, and not only could you get a three-year subscription for a fraction of the regular price, but they'll also include an additional three months absolutely free, and all with a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So, back to the video. We're going to take a look at both of these apparently correct flat earth models. Now, I need to apologize because I can't say who the first concept is from. Their channel name wasn't particularly legible and I downloaded the video a few weeks ago and now I can't find the comment. But let's take a look anyway. At the beginning of the video, he shows a CD or a disc. He immediately draws the geometric shape of an oblate spheroid. We can see how he separates the oblate spheroid with a disc that has a hole in the center. So we don't live on a globe, we live on a CD. Inside a globe. Below, he draws a circle with a swastika inside and immediately paints it completely black. From this black circle rays come out and three rays pass through the hole in the center. He draws reliefs on the edge of the hole and writes North Pole. I'm not particularly sure what a political party from 90 years ago has to do with a sun that, even on a flat earth, is thousands of years old, but okay. So far we have a black sun that is sitting underneath the disk that we live on, and it shines its light through a hole at the North Pole. And above this hole inside what would be the celestial vault, he draws a star, the polar star or Polaris. He marks two points and connects them in a circle and writes, equator. He draws two lines that go down from the polar star to the two points. The lines form a triangle. I don't think casually drawing lines from Polaris to the equator though really explains why we don't see Polaris in the Southern Hemisphere. Nor does it address the problem that at the equator, Polaris is at zero elevation, and yet on this flat Earth it's nearer to 45. Also, where is Sigma Octantis on a flat Earth? Because anybody who uses an equatorial camera mount, whether you're in Australia, South Africa, or South America, you aim it south of where you are, and yet you always end up aligning to Sigma Octantis. He draws two arrows to show the distance of the moon and the sun. Both are 3,300 miles or 5,310 kilometers away. I've actually done videos in the past debunking the workings of a sun or moon 3,000 miles high because of things like the angular size change that it would cause. It would basically make the sun and moon almost half in size as they got further away. And I've actually had flat earthers accuse me of being a liar and disingenuous for stating those figures of 3,000 miles because apparently flat earthers don't claim that they're that close. Of course, we know the moon isn't actually 3,000 miles away because we can measure the parallax of it, even if the earth is flat. A while back, I took some observations that people had posted online where they'd used parallax measuring, but based the calculations on a globe to get a figure of over 250,000 miles. So I reworked their maths, but based it on a flat Earth, and got the moon to still be 165,000 miles above a flat Earth. He draws continents on the surface and on the other side as well. He points both sides and writes, same. Below he writes summer land. 
So they've said the underneath of the disc is more land that they're calling Summerland and that it's the same. I'd be interested to know, is this an exact mirror of Earth? Does it have the same continents? Or are we talking about completely different land masses? Does anybody live there? If so, are they completely different people? Or is it suggesting some sort of parallel universe? Where right now there's an alternative me doing a video about being on the underside of their Earth with a black sun in the sky. And then how are they staying stuck to the floor if they're inverted to us? Does gravity exist on that side? He points out the ray coming out of the black sun toward the moon and then he erases the face of the moon. He makes signs explaining that the sun doesn't light up the moon. Who does it is the black sun. He draws rays coming out of the black sun and writes, Northern Lights. So the black sun is causing the northern lights and is also apparently what is lighting up the moon to cause its phases rather than our own sun. A few problems I'm spotting here though is if the black sun is causing the northern lights, wouldn't they be happening all of the time? Or how would we be able to monitor the solar activity of the black sun to know when the northern lights are going to happen? since we tend to know in advance when they're likely to be active. Also, what causes the southern lights? Southern Hemisphere really does cause problems for flat earthers. We have the Aurora Borealis in the northern hemisphere, but there's also the Aurora Australis, which appears in the southern hemisphere. Explained on a globe as the same thing happening as the northern lights, but just over the south pole instead. But on a flat Earth, it would fully encompass the outer edge of Earth without being visible north of the equator. How is this black sun causing that? As for the black sun causing the moon's phases, that might work for that one particular diagram, but the moon's orbit doesn't hold a constant distance from the North Pole. Its ground position regularly moves well into the Southern Hemisphere. And yet, the phase of it doesn't suddenly change. If the black sun was stationary, then the moment the moon moved to the south, it would move out of the black sun's light path and it would turn to a new moon. So the southern hemisphere would barely ever see anything more than a quarter moon, and we would only ever get a full moon when it was directly over the North Pole, which it doesn't do. And the northern hemisphere would never see a new moon, which doesn't match what we see either. We all get different phases of the moon, both in the north and in the south at various points of the year, with a very steady, gradual and predictable change in the phases. The black sun would have to move towards the north pole to keep line of sight to the moon when it went into the southern hemisphere, which happens on a monthly basis. But that would then open up the angle that its light could shine through and would wind up causing the northern lights to appear over the equator, which doesn't appear to have happened in over a century. I'd also like to see their suggestions as to what mechanics are directly linking the position of the moon to the position of the black sun without apparently being affected or affecting our own sun. Plus, the northern lights would get much brighter when the moon was in the southern hemisphere because it would have pulled the black sun closer to us. I'd also feel sorry for the people on the other side who get the black sun almost dropping on their heads once a month just to keep our moon illuminated puts a whole new meaning to the phrase their time of the month. So uh, an interesting concept, but still one with a few major plot holes in the design. Maybe the second real flat earth model can address them, which comes from someone called Daz Nez. The reason there are no visible stars is because it is clearly daytime. The camera has its exposure settings set for correctly exposing the daylight, which is then making the stars too underexposed for the sensor to detect. Take a look at a high altitude balloon launch done at night and you'll see lots of stars. Ooh, now this is interesting. A flat earther stating that a flat plane circular earth is wrong. I know I'm going to get accused of straw manning by flat earthers who say they don't claim that that is the flat earth map, even though they aren't prepared to show us what flat earth map they do actually claim is true. 
However, the map projection is irrelevant. We're just talking about the concept of Earth being a flat circular plane. What you project on it doesn't matter. But Daznes does at least acknowledge the points that many people like myself have raised about what is wrong with the circular flat Earth. Flights around the Southern Hemisphere that require speeds far beyond the capabilities of current commercial aircraft. No sign of Polaris in the Southern Hemisphere, and stars rotating in different directions north versus south. So what is his working flat Earth model? A fourth dimension. So apparently the Earth is a flat Mercator, but thanks to the fourth dimension, when you travel east or west and you reach the end of the Earth, it transports you instantly back to the other side. So it's behaving like the Earth is a cylinder that's on an endless loop, but it's actually flat. But it doesn't work if you're going north to south. If you take the Mercator projection and roll it into a cylinder north to south, Traveling south from Australia would cause the fourth dimension to spit you out north of Russia. Instead, you're at the south of Argentina. Why is there a significant shift when you're crossing through this dimension north to south, but no shift in latitude when you're traveling east to west? Seems like someone's cherry picking here. I was actually quite annoyed when I first saw this concept because I was I was close to having something similar done for an April Fools about a working flat earth model except my idea was rather than having a fourth dimension moving you around a single earth was instead to have endless repeating earths in all directions don't worry that doesn't actually work either the concept is an intriguing one, and I applaud Daznes for at least having the mindset to admit you can't just ignore major problems with a model because they're inconvenient. However, his own 4D flat Earth still has some serious flaws. For starters, it's based on the Mercator, which doesn't have accurately scaled distances all across it. The accuracy changes as your latitude changes, so there is still no accurate flat Earth map nor does it address the star trails that he himself raised as a problem with the flat circle model. How are the stars travelling over a 4D flat Earth that cause them to appear to rotate in opposite directions north versus south? Or where is Polaris? If the Earth is physically flat, then Polaris would still be visible south of the equator. If it's a cylinder, then it would appear at the horizon for everyone. And whilst plane flight times might be more realistic compared to the flat circle idea, why would planes be travelling in great circle routes over the Mercator? It's almost like the flat Earth is acting as both a cylinder east to west and north to south at the same time. Seems the quest for a working flat Earth model continues. Thanks once again for joining us today. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.